as a kernel, then there's something happening also there. Okay. And uh, so for the last part of the lecture of today, what I wanted to do is uh, assume that you have a heat kernel over there, try to deduce how you can find the trace, the short time asymptotic of the trace of the heat kernel. Okay. So it's, it's more <coughs> tricky uh, in this case. Uh, and uh, so yeah, I wanted to give uh, you an idea of that okay, using this. Uh, Trace of the heat kernel. Okay, so one problem, as we'll see in a moment, is that in fact it's not trace class. So you have to think about how to take the trace. But uh, well, assuming we don't know this for the moment, uh, to take the trace, it corresponds to uh, integrate along the diagonal. Okay, so uh, taking the trace of uh, k of, of t, where we, we fix the time, uh, correspond to uh, uh, integrate along the diagonal. So the diagonal here uh, for all time, so I just restrict to uh, this, this slice here. And so if I, I draw how it looks like, uh, so I'll, I'll call it, uh, so I'll have my time variable here. And then here that will be the row variable. So now I restrict to the diagonal, so I can take uh, row or row prime as a variable. And uh, so this will be, uh, that comes from the cost phase, so that this, the little bump. But when I restrict the diagonal, the only blow up I see is the middle one, okay, because the, the other one uh, uh, as, as before. Okay, so that phase is uh, the boundary phase, and here's the temporal phase. Okay. And uh, so, and of course there's the, the, the theta variable also. So th that space, uh, I'll call it uh, uh, diag uh, h of, of sigma tilde. So this space, uh, this diagonal, but including for all time. And uh, so when I want to integrate the heat kernel for fixed time, uh, so that will look like this uh, in, the, in this picture. So let's say here that's the line square root of t is equal to uh, a constant c. And uh, so uh, I have my eat, the restriction of the heat kernel to the diagonal lives here. And then when I want to integrate for a fixed at time, I have to integrate along a line where, t, where square root of t is constant. So when you want to do the short time asymptotic uh, as t goes to 0, uh, when you approach t goes to 0, the, the line will break into two parts. So that part here and that, that part there. So both will contribute for the short time asymptotic expansion of the trace of the heat kernel. And um, so the, the new feature uh, when there's a cusp or in the situation is that uh, the corner, uh, well, uh, in fact, this corner may contribute for a logarithmic term in the short time asymptotic expansion. So that's one thing I want to explain. And uh, the other problem is that uh, in fact, so if uh, we restrict the uh, the heat kernel to this uh, diagonal space, uh, so that's uh, so uh, well provided uh, you, you believe that uh, the theory has been well developed for the heat kernel. Uh, it turns out that uh, that's a smooth function, but with some singularity. Though, so uh, so. I think it lives in, in that space. Uh. 
And for convenience, uh, here I put uh, that's uh, just a density, the density bundle on this manifold uh, as a manifold with corners, so it's uh, form that are smooth up to the boundary. Okay. And then, uh, then those are boundary defining function for uh, the boundary phase and the temporal phase. Okay. So this, it's singular on that phase, it's singular on that phase, and here uh, it's just uh, smooth. Uh, but the, the problem is that when you want to integrate uh, in, in that line, because of this factor, uh, so this means that uh, k, uh, k restricted to a fixed time uh, is not trace class. Okay, so that's uh, another problem. Uh, in this uh, context, is that the the up the heat kernel for positive time is not trace class. Okay. So you, if you want to define the zeta function and then the determinant, you cannot just take the trace; uh, it doesn't work. So there's uh, well probably more than two ways to go around it, but I want to expose two different ways to define a trace for this uh, operator. Okay. Uh, so the first one. Uh, it's an approach, uh, I think, due mostly to Merlar, so, <coughs> so I'll say this, uh, two, uh, there's two ways to go uh, around this. So uh, one uh, it's a method, uh, going back to Merlar, so I think our variant of, of this one is to um, Study carefully. Uh, well, so I think Miller, uh, Miller is not uh, is constructing uh, the heat kernel in a different way. But uh, if you translate in this setting, his method to uh, define a trace is to subtract uh, something that will make the operator trace class, and that means understanding exactly what make it fail to uh, become trace class. And in fact, that's this uh, part here. So that's the the top order term and that phase. That, that's the source of trouble to uh, making it trace class. So, so uh, the strategy is to subtract. So, subtract uh, minus t, or so little k. So, it's minus t over 4, 4 pi t. Um, I think it's exactly this that you have to subtract. Uh, whoops, I, I shouldn't put the T there. Okay, so the, the, the heat kernel of the constant matrix is just this exponential, but the, the rest is uh, it has a meaning, but basically the, the, the thing that I'm called, uh, so, so that will always appear, and then this is the thing that depends on which Laplacian you con consider or somehow, or if, if you allow to act on different bundle. Okay, so that's the part that's supposed to be the heat kernel of the matrix. But... Uh, <coughs> Uh, the cost of doing this uh, method is that you have to decide, uh, so this function k is defined on the total space there, but the source of problem for uh, not being trace class exactly comes from the top order term on that face. Okay. And uh, so there's uh, some choice involved. You have to decide uh, uh, until which value of true you define uh, this function k, or, uh, and in fact, no matter what value you do, you'll change things at that phase, and you'll change things at that phase, and uh, more importantly, you'll change things at this corner. Okay. And, uh, <coughs> uh, but the, the construction is the not, uh, not uh, entering into detail on how to define k globally on the surface, uh, 
then uh, what you have is that uh, k restricted to t minus little k restricted to, to some value of t uh, is a trace class for uh, positive t. Okay, so you can take the trace of uh, this operator. And uh, so I want to describe uh, how the logarithmic term arise when uh, in the short time asymptotic of the trace in this, in this context. It will come precisely from this corner. And uh, it's really uh, subtracting this that creates the, the logarithmic term somehow. So at uh, near this phase, near there, it's basically as before. So if you have a Taylor series over there, that will contribute uh, in a natural way uh, the Taylor series. The only new feature is this corner over there. Okay, so uh, so we, we need to understand what happened. Uh, the corner and uh, so we have something like this and so what I'll do is I'll do a, a zoom of this situation zoom near, near this corner So uh, then this, uh, the line of uh, square root of t equal to c it will look like a, a an hyperbola. And that will become uh, really a, a square there. So I can still use rho as a function over there. But here I cannot use, uh, so the line over there stands for the line on this face there. So uh, I cannot use square root of t because square root of t vanishes uh, on, on that face somehow. So I have to use this renormalized time I was uh, vaguely uh, mentioning earlier on. So I have to use this uh, square root of tau. Uh, so square root of tau uh, is uh, square root of t, but divide by rho. Okay, so that, that quotient makes sense as a function on, on that part here. And uh, So the claim is that uh, so my E kernel uh, it has a Taylor series or with some singular term, but it has a Taylor series at this corner, and each term will contribute uh, a term in the asymptotic expansion, and some of them will contribute a log. Okay, so how this uh, happen? So uh, I'll have this uh, k minus little k near the corner uh, to be. Uh, of the following form, so so AKL of uh, square root of tau k and then uh, rho L and uh, so I, I think I'll put the be rho over rho and theta and then dt over square root of t. So for the trace, uh, so I introduced this dt just to simplify uh, how, how what we mean to, uh, so the end, taking the trace just become really a push forward, uh, or integrating just in one direction for the form, simplify what one needs to do. So the, and in, in that region, let's say that's uh, one and one, so yet uh, square root of tau is between one and and zero and uh, rho is between uh, one and zero. So if I substitute what is uh, rho, so I want to integrate it on this curve in, in that little box. Okay, so outside the box, uh, it's easier to understand uh, in fact what, what, what's happening. And uh, so in that box, uh, so square root of t is little c, so I get zero is less than little c over rho is less than one, and then 
rho is uh, less than 1. So what we get is that uh, rho is, uh, is between 0 and, and c. I assume that my constant c is chosen uh, small enough, smaller than 1. Okay. And um, so I can look at each asymptotic term in the what's the contribution for the, the trace. So, so each term. This? Uh, so I, I want to use rho to, so I want to integrate my heat kernel on that line, okay, or the, the form, and uh, so, but inside this box, so to take into account what's happening in the corner. And uh, so uh, the, the, that's the definition of the box, and then on the other hand on the line, square root of t is equal to c, so, and square root of tau is equal to square root of t over rho. But the from the box to the inequality you get the <coughs> rho is bigger than this, right? Uh, bigger? <laughs> oh yeah, maybe maybe I'm uh, maybe I got <laughs> yeah, sorry, maybe I got it wrong, yeah. Uh, Yeah, I got it. Yeah, so uh, in my note, I got it. Yes, yeah, thank you. Uh, so somehow I was using zero. I don't know why. So it, yeah, so it's uh, c is less than rho is less than one. Yeah, thank you. OK. And uh, so the, the contribution, uh, so I have to integrate the integral variable from c to 1 of uh, so this. Uh, <coughs> AKL, I can replace uh, uh, square root of tau by the uh, square root of t over rho uh, k, and then uh, rho L, and d rho over rho, take out from the t over square root of t. Okay, and then the integral is just in the rho variable, so I'll be left. Uh, uh, well, we have to also to integrate in the theta variable, but uh, maybe let's just forget about theta, okay? So to, to simplify the, the picture, so that there will be no problem in the theta variable. And uh, so when we integrate, so uh, that's equal, so there's two case. So if, uh, so if uh, k if k is uh, not equal to L, no uh, log term. Okay, so you, you can compute explicitly that there would be some power of t involved, but uh, no t. And if uh, k is equal to L, uh, then uh, when we integrate, we get, uh, so it's k, uh, L minus k, so it's uh, 0 and then 1 over rho. So when you get 1 over rho, you get log of rho. At 1, we get 0, and then at c, we get t, so we get uh, minus square root of t k uh, log of square root of t and then uh, mean t over square root of t. Okay, so if I, and then there's the AKL. The, the term. I think there's maybe a minus sign. Uh, and uh, so with the term we added to make the operator trace class, uh, that would be a, one of these terms where k is equal to L uh, is equal to 0. So uh, for the top order term of, the, uh, of this uh, correction we, we bring, so that will give a situation where you have log of t or square root of t over square root of t. In this case. So, um, case, uh, well, 
after some computation to, to see the other contribution, but uh, so the trace of T of T minus T of T uh, behaves like the so there will be a term, the most singular term will be one over T. Uh, then there will be this uh, log term uh, over square root of T, and in fact there could be some uh, some square root of t, and then uh, it, it continues like this. But uh, you have some log term arising in the synthetic expansion. Okay, and uh, so um, to 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 finish the lecture, I want to present the the other way to uh, regularize or to define the trace, which. Uh, well, uh, I mean, I have to do. A, a, I prefer the other method, but well, some other people prefer the, the method. That, but um, so it's, it's it's not the same trace, so it's not the same uh, value, but it has the same feature. It will have the same sort of asymptotic expansion, but for a different reason. Um, so the the second way that uh, so. Pierre-Albin and I uh, use is to uh, use a regular trace. So, okay, so how to define it? Um, so uh, what you do is uh, it's a bit like the, the zeta function. So look at the functional which to uh, variable z. You associate the trace uh, of rho z times the heat kernel. Okay, so uh, you think of it as maybe just this trace as integration along the diagonal, and you multiply by this boundary defining function so that it becomes integrable. Okay, so, uh, uh, so it's allomorphic for, uh, I guess in this case, it's for uh, real uh, z bigger than zero. Yeah, at zero, there's, there's a problem, but uh, slightly bigger, we, we can uh, integrate, and then it, it's holomorphic. So um, what you can do is define the residue trace. So the, the idea with this holomorphic realization is that there will be a pole at z equal to zero, but to define the trace, you remove the pole, and then you take the what's left. So the, the residue trace. You know this way, okay. So that's uh, the residue at uh, z equal to zero of this uh, functional. It turns out that it has a, as for the zeta function, it has a meromorphic continuation and it has a pole at zero uh, when the operator is in a trace class. And then the regularized trace is uh, defined just by so. So I'll define this with trace with a bar. So it's the limit as uh, z goes to 0 of this uh, functional. But for in order for the limit to converge, I have to subtract the, the, the pole. I take the, the finite part, and uh, so uh, so in in this case, so that, that's uh, another way to define a trace. So the residue trace uh, that's an honest trace in the sense that it will vanish on commutator, but on trace class operator it gives zero. And this one, this regularized trace, it's not a trace. Uh, in the sense that it won't vanish on commutator generally. But it has the advantage that if you put an operator that is trace class, it gives the, the usual trace. So it's a sort of extension of the trace for operators that are not trace class. And the price to pay is that it doesn't necessarily vanish on, on commutator. And for this uh, trace, you have also the same sort of asymptotic expansion. But uh, in fact, it, it took us uh, a while to. Uh, 
to understand, uh, we, 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 we thought, the, so usually it's the push forward theorem to uh, figure out uh, this logarithmic term, how they pops out. But here it's not really the push forward theorem uh, because the, in the approach of Muller, the problem in the corner is really coming from this, subtracting this new term. Uh, in fact, it comes from this regularization. So the problem becomes at the other corner. So if I go like this, rho root of t, and then uh, root of t rho to c. So it comes from this other corner this time. So if I do a zoom, so now I can use square root of t. Uh, and here, uh, so maybe that would be my box, and then my line would look like this. And for this variable, I have to use 1 over square root of tau. So maybe I, I'll say I use rho over square root of t for the variable in, in that direction. And uh, OK, so the <coughs> so uh, you have to look at uh, the, the, the functional in this case. So if you have a k that uh, at this corner look like uh, uh, akl and then uh, square root of tl and then rho over square root of t uh, k and e rho over rho. Uh, and well, there's the d theta, but I won't write it. And then the t over square root of t. Uh, so in this case, the box uh, is uh, zero is less than square root of t is less than one, and uh, uh, rho over square root of t is less than one is uh, less than zero. So it implies that uh, rho is between this and square root of t. So that that. I think that's correct this time, uh, fully. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah. Uh, and then you, you do a similar integral. So uh, if you look at trace of uh, the, the contribution, uh, so you have to uh, integral from 0 to c. So uh, I assume that. Uh, Square root of t is fixed to c, and then it, this akl uh, square root of tl over square root of tk, and I have to put the rho to the power z to make the thing converge. Okay, and I, I just integrate in, in rho. And uh, so when we do this. Uh, In case different from zero, uh, no no log term. But uh, when k is equal to zero, I think if I haven't done it correctly. Uh, so well for real z, so what you have is uh, uh, basically uh, so you get uh, akl square root of t. Uh, L and then, uh, oh, or maybe, uh, uh, yeah, so it's rho, rho to the z uh, over z, so the, the rho part, and uh, yeah, then this uh, over square root of t. And uh, well, the reason is that uh, now that's just the, this functional. And then to see, um, you have to take the finite part. So there's a pole. So that's, uh, but rho to the z, you have to recall uh, that it's, you can write it as uh, exponential of z log rho. Okay. So the constant term is this, and then plus z. Uh, and well, of course, uh, here uh, it becomes a C. Yeah. So, 
second log c plus uh, i or the term. So when you take the finite part, so that's contribute to the pole, and then the, the finite part that you'll get a log c, log c or log square root of t. So, uh, uh, so you get the finite part is uh, AKL of uh, square root of t and then uh, log square root of t or square root of t. And then plugging this sort of thing, uh, you, you get the same similar asymptotic expansion as the, the other trace. Okay, so uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you, sir. <coughs>